Hey guys, welcome back to the Guitar Max channel and in today's video, it's time to bring the thunder. That's right, today I have a bass to check out and this is from one of my favorite brands, AIO or All-in-One Guitars. Obviously, I've checked out many of their guitars and since I'm trying to expand my content a little bit and check out more basses, this seemed like an obvious choice. So recently, I went over to the AIO shop and I was checking out all the different basses they had over there. Now they've got more exotic stuff like neck through basses and some five and six string basses, even some fretless models. But this right here is really more my style. A classic four string jazz style bass in an awesome flame burst red finish with the matching headstock. Check that out up there. Anyway, I'm not the greatest bass player in the world by a long shot, but they were kind enough over there to let me check this out to show you guys. So let's go over some basic specs and then we'll get into the demo and then I want to talk a little bit about what it's like to play this bass from a guitarist's perspective. Okay, so this is called the AIO JB4 model. Now it's got a basswood body, it's got a flame maple veneer, a maple neck, ebony fretboard, really beautiful ebony there. Now it has a 38 millimeter nut down here and it's a bone nut. And we've got some honking big uh, Grover tuners up here on the headstock. And it's got 20 frets and it's a 34 inch scale length. The controls are what you'd expect to find on a jazz style bass like this. You have two volume controls, for, uh, one for each pickup. So you can mix the different levels of the pickups. And then you have a master tone knob down here. And the pickups themselves are the AIO proprietary Alnico pickups. Okay, so it's a classic design, pretty straightforward specs on this bass. Now let's go ahead and get into the demo. And for this demo, I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be recording direct and then I'm gonna be using a bass plugin called Bass Grinder. And that's a free VST plugin that a lot of people use for recording bass. Okay guys, so let's listen to it. But real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, checking out cool, affordable, guitars and basses, and also, of course, staying up on the latest guitar news in the guitar universe, and you have not already subscribed, please consider subscribing right now. Okay, let's plug this in and listen to how it sounds. Okay guys, so let's talk a little bit about the tones that we can get from this bass. So as you would expect, a jazz style bass tends to be a little fatter sounding, a little darker. But that being said, with the dual volume controls, you're able to still get a wide variety of different sounds from this bass. Now of course you also have the master tone knob down here. Uh, for me personally, most of the playing I'm going to be doing is going to be like metal or rock or something like that, where you want a little bit more of a cutting bass tone, if that makes sense. Um, so for me, I, I am pretty much gonna have the tone up all the way uh, when I'm playing. But if you're gonna actually play jazz or uh, you know something where you want to uh, just sort of 
take up a little bit more space but not be quite as intrusive with your tone, if that makes sense, then definitely rolling the tone back on this bass gives it a really, really nice kind of fat low end without any of those uh, percussive highs that some basses have. Now one thing that's really cool and interesting about this bass from a guitarist perspective is how the neck tapers down to where it's very, very thin when you come down to the headstock here. Like I said in the beginning, this is only a 38 millimeter width on the nut here. So the neck is actually gonna be thinner or I guess narrower is the best way to describe it than some guitar necks. So if you're somebody like me who's primarily a guitar player and then you occasionally play bass, it's very, very easy to transition to this because the neck is still very comfortable and it's not feeling like a big thick neck compared to a guitar. In general, this neck is very comfortable and very easy to move around on. Like it has a satin finish on the back of the neck, very smooth uh, ebony fretboard, just very comfortable to play. And of course, all the AIO stuff always has really nice fret job and everything on it. So no sharp frets or anything like that. Now, for those reasons, I think this would actually be a really good first bass or a bass that someone's going to learn on. Now, the other thing I kind of want to zero in on here is the weight of this bass. Now, this is physically a pretty large instrument. And this thing, I weighed this. This thing here, this exact bass, weighs a little over 9 pounds. It came out to about 9.15 pounds when I weighed it. And if you look on their website, they're listing the weights at a little under nine pounds. I think they have like 8.8 .8 pounds on there. So I think you could pretty much count on these weighing around nine pounds, give or take a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind. Basses in general tend to be pretty hefty, especially one like this, a jazz style bass, which has a large body on it. And that's an important point. And that's really, you know, if you only take one thing away from this video, remember this. If you're a guitarist and you're ever playing a show and a fight breaks out, you always want to make sure the bass player is on your side. Okay, now the other thing I should mention here, um, like I said in the beginning, this comes in the beautiful trans red burst finish, which I always love. Uh, but they have several other colors uh, that this bass comes in. And like I said, this is the JB4. So it's four string jazz style bass, but they also have a PB4 which is going to be more along the lines of a Fender P bass or precision bass. And then, yeah, if you really want to get crazy, they have these amazing like walnut and maple five and six string neck through basses, even some fretless ones. But that stuff is a little bit out of my league right now. So right now, I think this is the third bass that I own. I've got an old kind of uh, Davison like P bass knockoff, and then I've got the Jackson concert bass, and then I've got this one. And out of the three, this one is definitely the best, despite it still not being super expensive, because these go for, you know, around 450 bucks in that range. All right, guys, so I've got two big questions for you. One is, what do you think of this bass? And the other is, do you want to see more bass stuff on my channel? The second question is going to determine how much I have to practice, because if I'm going to review some more basses, I need to develop at least a rudimentary slap technique. Okay guys, so I'm going to have a link for this bass down in the video description below. I'm also going to have a link down there for the backing tracks that I was using. Those are from the backing tracks by Tim Channel. I love to use stuff from there. And what's really cool is he actually has some bass backing tracks where it has the full band minus the bass part, and that's what I was using for this video. I will also have a link for that plugin that I was using, as well as my latest instructional program. All that stuff is gonna be down in the video description below. Okay guys, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you next time.